Hi there, my name is Dr Anthony Cliff and I'm a senior lecturer here in the Department of Geography and International Development. So I mostly teach uh, our master's level uh, flood course, so you'll find me teaching research methods to our level sevens and you'll also find me using UAV so technologies. students uh, all about drone technologies, um, how you use them and using simple equipment like this to recreate the environment digitally and virtually creating 3D polygraph um, structure for motion models all the way through to DSMs and all for mosaics and all that fancy cool stuff I get to teach our students. Um, you'll find me at level four, I teach uh, tutorials at level four and at level five I also teach research methods in the department to our level five and level six students. So you may well come across me in those particular ones for 5013 all about research methods, particularly quantitative stuff and qualitative issues. And certainly you'll find me a dissertation. I'm one of the go-to people all about um, research methods in the department. And also, you also find me in the department that I'm the chief uh, drone pilot of the department. So a lot of flying uh, comes through me. Um, and also I'm the postgraduate uh, assessment officer as well. So any issues that our postgrads have in relation to assessments, I'm the one uh, that they deal with. What about my current research then? Well, I have plenty on at the moment. Um, so I'm currently writing up some papers from my PhD. Um, and as I mentioned there, that was all about using the drone technologies to help students just like yourselves, geoscience students. So I was basically mapping uh, field sites, creating 3D models um, that students could then explore before they went on field work, while they were on field work and after field work. And I did a real big evaluation with geoscience students from another institution, uh, investigating what were the benefits and pros, uh, what were the benefits, sorry, and what were the uh, the cons to that particular method of, of delivery of field work. Of course, in 2019, that was, uh, well, I started in 2016, so 2016 to 2019, you know, it was, uh, oh, wow, this is interesting, this is new, that's nice to have. Of course, we're now in 2020, you know, September 2020, COVID happened. Now it's got a real cutting edge part of research where everyone's trying to scramble to do these things and it's nice to be at the forefront of that. Uh, other things that I'm currently involved in, so in the department, I'm currently um, working with uh, Dr. Catherine Welsh and Dr. Rebecca Collins all on a, a huge study in the UK looking at the impact that lockdown has had on um, people's environmental environmental kind of awareness and, and how, they, how environmentally they are. So we've done a, a study just that during lockdown, after lockdown, uh, and currently where we are today, where we're kind of in between. And we're kind of measuring um, and trying to see, basically, has there been a difference? Has Have they been more greener? Uh, are they gonna stay that way? Is that something that, that's gonna happen? Are they buying less food? Are they traveling less? Are they walking more? So a really interesting, really topical uh, kind of study. So completely different to, to the PhD work. Um, you might have gathered from obviously talking about PhDs and, and drones that I'm quite a techie uh, kind of person. So currently um, I'm currently working as an institution project uh, and also with Dr. Serval Miller where of course you know Moodle, you've used Moodle by now um, and obviously during lockdown it's come to light it might not necessarily be the best virtual learning environment that's on offer. Um, so. They selected me in my module that I teach at level seven, my research methods, and we're gonna trial a brand new system, a brand new uh, virtual learning environment. So doing a big institutional project, um, following that through, does it work, doesn't it work? What's the benefits, what's the cons compared to Moodle? So again, really at the cutting edge forefront of new technologies to enhance the student learning experience, which is effectively what my research has been about the past couple of years. Now, working um, outside of the department, um, I do some other different projects. So, working with a group of um, other students um, who became friends during the PhD, and we were all from different disciplines. So, we've been writing over the past year or so a big interdisciplinarity paper of how different disciplines can come together and work together. Um, and that's been really interesting, that's been really fun to do because uh, you've been working with friends, it doesn't really feel like work. Um, but that's really, again, at the forefront of that. Um, Lockdown has really opened up these new ways of working. We just happened to be doing that before anyone give it a name. Um, I currently work with Dr. Uh, Ruth Healy in the department, who for many years, myself, I've worked as uh, an editor 
known for an international journal, the International Journal for Students as Partners. Um, I worked on that on the first day of my PhD um, and they were setting up a journal, uh, Ruth was a part of that uh, and I've been on the editorial board ever since. So we're doing this big research project so there's you know uh, Ruth being in the UK and then we have people from the USA, Canada, Australia, uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong um, and we've been working together on this big paper. I've been uh, quite instrumental in that paper, um, putting that together, doing the interviews, uh, transcribing them and we're currently writing a paper of how we can get students um, onto these kind of editorial boards into academic publishing and we've kind of documented our experiences as we've gone through. So quite a qualitative uh, project. And then finally, um, I'm working with, um, again, another very close friend uh, who I met at undergrad, uh, who is a doctor now up in um, Australia, uh, doing a postdoc for a couple of years now in Australia, Dr. Chloe Leach. And we're working together on a paper and a research project all about evaluating online um, conferences. So again, we've had that shift to, um, you know, uh, online conferences are kind of the norm at the moment. Um, but what are the benefits and challenges to that compared to a traditional? It's changed over time. It has changed massively. Um, back in my undergraduate days, um, all I, I started, started my undergraduate dissertation, which really got me into research. So I'm a bit of an av geek, um, you know, a bit of an aviation fan. So I base my research all around about looking at noise pollution around an international airport. That was a big hit. That went down really well. Um, I presented that at Parliament. Um, we were selected to go down and actually give it to Parliament. Uh, and I presented it at Beaker as well. So the British Conference of Undergraduate Research, where it was picked up. Um, and then I presented it to Parliament. So, so then following on from that, I did a Master's in Environmental Sustainability. And I was again looking at aviation. So I was looking at this time, the carbon offset in of aviation. So, so carbon offset in the flights is, is something that many people know about. You know, it's been around for a long time. It's been researched quite often. Um, however, no one actually looked at carbon offset in of airports. You know, you have all those vehicles there. You've got all those aircraft still coming in and landing and taking off. There's a lot of energy there that, you know, is potentially not being carbon offset. So. So I worked with um, uh, the passengers of the UK and developed a scheme and basically to see um, how well that scheme could generate money for airports, who was most likely to um, uh, to give that in, to, to donate, what, what kind of age ranges, what genders, um, what jobs, how much would it generate. Um, and that was really fun, that was a great scheme to be a part of. And so then following on from that, so again, that was very um, quantitative kind of based uh, studies. And then worked as a research assistant for a couple of years um, and I worked with Professor Roy Alexander um, who used to be in the department and uh, he was a big massive global project all about trying to get this village Ashton Hayes carbon neutral so I worked on that for numerous years um, doing different things from you know energy readings to interviews in people's houses to questionnaires um, so many things I learned on that particular project. That went on for quite a number of years, um, quite a well-known project. So that was really, really important to be a part of that. I did, did other things. I, I worked um, with other academics in the institution looking at gender and the ref, so how gender impacts um, uh, the research excellence framework, something that academics go through um, on a cycle, all about research and, and they get graded on it and all this kind of stuff. But looking at how women particularly are affected by uh, childcare and, and lack of promotions and that kind of stuff. So again, completely different to anything I've done before. I did all the interviews and helped transcribe um, all those interviews. I did that. So again, new experiences, which was which was great. Completely different, but again, just as vital, the really important um, as all the other work that I've done. I've been my main influences. Um, I've been very fortunate to have fantastic mentors over the years um, and those mentors who have kept in touch when I wasn't in the institution um, and even given me opportunities when I was a student and when I left the, uh, the institution to do research projects with them um, and to take the chance, to take the chance on me um, and of course you've got to prove yourself but that really opened up so many doors for me and it gave me such a breadth of opportunity. Um, and that's one reason I teach research methods now is because many academics stick to one particular field and one particular way of doing research. That's not been me. I've done so many different fields and so many different projects um, that span 
We're very qualitative right the way through to very quantitative and all the things in between. So that's one reason that I teach research methods because I've had that experience which many academics don't necessarily get. So my biggest influence has been those mentors. So finally, yet yeah, how is my research going to change and develop in the future? Well, first and foremost, I've got to finish all of these projects and stop saying yes to more new ones uh, that come through. Um, so we've got to finish them off, got to finish them off. Um, and that's important. You know, it's not just important for career progression, being a very young academic. Um, you know, at, at 28, I uh, just had my PhD for just over a year. You know, of course, it's important if you want to stay in academia to get those papers uh, out there. But from a non-career perspective, it's all about what the research is telling and how that can influence us. So, you know. So, I kept you long enough. That's me. Thanks for now.